Hi again, it's me Fadi and welcome again to my YouTube channel. This is the third episode on how to build and maintain a reef tank. In the last couple of weeks, I talked on how to select the tank and what sump to get. Reef tanks are usually drilled with some holes to install the overflow and retain lines. Already tanks like Red Sea and Waterbox Aquarium already have the overflow drilled and ready to be used. You will need to pick a return pump and some fittings to connect it to the system. However, if the aquarium is not drilled, you will need to drill it. Glass and acrylic aquariums can be drilled, but you need to be sure that aquarium is not made of timbered glass. If the tank don't have overflow, you can order a ready-made overflow like eShops or you can ask your aquarium builder to build one. The water will flow from the display using an overflow box. These boxes can be either external or internal. I like external overflow more than internal as internal overflow will occupy a valuable space inside the tank. The downside of the external overflow that there will be a space between the tank and the wall. Overflow box should be large enough to handle the flow rate coming from the return pump and to be able to skim water surface area as much as possible. Surface skimming will reduce the oily layer on the water surface and will help to add more oxygen. There are three kinds of common aquarium overflows, dorso, herpy, and pain animal. These are designed to be silent and fail safe to prevent flooding. The dorso is very simple and common. It is implemented in many ready-made tanks. The downside of dorso is that there is no safety backup and it's typically loud. Still, some people prefer them as they are simple to implement and take less space than other overflow stands. Dorso is a simple standby with an elbow turned down and small drill vent at the top. Herpy overflow have two standpipes, one with a valve to tune the flow and the other one is higher and used for emergency if the main pipe is clogged. The third option and my favorite is the pen animal overflow system. Pen animal is an overflow system that combines dorso and herpy in a single system. There are three standpipes, full siphon, open channel and emergency standby. Full siphon and open channel are similar to each other, with turn down elbow and caps with the same height. The full siphon must have a valve to tune water flow through the system, and open channel must have a vent. The emergency standby is higher than the other two standbypes, and it's used only if the main pipes are clogged or at system startup. This way, the pain animal is very silent and reliable and can adjust to a wide range of flow rates. In my 180 gallons reef tank, I'm using the paint animal with external overflow box. In Hany's 120 gallon tank, we are using a simple dorsal inside an internal overflow box. Ready-made tanks come with all needed plumbing. You can use hard BVC plumbing or flexible tubing for plumbing the tank. In my tank, I use all hard BVC except for media reactors, I use flexible tubing. You will need a return pump to push the water back to the main display. You need to pick a pump that can push 5 to 10 times an hour per gallons of display tank after head loss. I always recommend having a DC variable speed pump that is a little oversized. This will be helpful for future upgrades. With DC pumps you can adjust the pump flow rate using the controller. I'm using GBAL 12000 DC pump running at 100% with manifold that have three outputs to feed my media reactors and two outputs to the main display with lock line, nozzle and fittings. At Hany's tank we are using the same pump at 80%. Some of the excellent pumps I use on many projects is Ecotec Marine Vector. There are three models of this pump, S1 which is good for small tank, M1 which is good for medium tank and L1 which is good for large tanks. Also, I would love to try and have a look at the Nipton core pumps, especially that it can be controlled by Epix controller. Also, you can run the core pump standalone if you don't have Epix controller. Now, you will need to get all the needed fittings, pipes, BVC premier and cement, and for threaded fittings, you will need Teflon tape. I'll mention some of the common fitting types. Bulkhead is a fitting that will fit in the overflow holes and it will allow the water to go down from the overflow to the sump without leaking. We put the head side and the gasket inside the tank, then we screw the nut from the outside until we have a tight fit. The elbow allows us to go vertical and horizontal in our plumbing. There is another kind of elbow, the 45 degree elbow, which allows us to have a plumbing in a degree that will 
reduce distance and head pressure. The union fitting is very useful in the assembling and assembling the plumbing without cutting. It's a good idea to have a union fitting before every single elbow. This will allow us to rotate the elbow if we glue it incorrectly. It's very useful to install a union just after the pump. This will be helpful to remove the pump from the plumbing, to clean it or to maintain it, and then put it back together. The street elbow is useful if I want to connect two elbows directly together. This is very helpful and instead of adding a small pipe between two regular elbows, I'll just use the street elbow. By this, I'll have less parts and less chances of leakage. The T fitting can be used to split one line into two lines. Also, there is washing or reducing fitting. This can be used to change pipe sizes. I can change, for example, one inch to half inch by the use of this washing fitting. The ball valve is used to turn off and turn on the flow. It's better to use a true union ball valve because the unions can be removed for cleaning and or maintenance. For tuning the flow, we can use gate valve. To make the plumbing, we need to measure the pipe length, then cut it using a saw or this PVC cutter. PVC cutter is a lot better and easier to use and it will give us a clean cut. Then we do dry fitting for all the plumbing in our tank without gluing. We can put also some marks on the fittings before gluing so we can know the exact direction of the fittings. Before gluing the pipes and the fittings, we use some BVC cleaner to clean the fittings and the pipes. Then we use a generous amount of PVC cement on both ends of the pipe and the fitting. And we push and twist for 10 seconds until we have a perfect seal. For threaded fittings, we can't use glue to make the seal. We use Teflon tape. We wrap a generous amount of Teflon tape then we screw the fittings inside each other. That's it for this week. Next week we'll make some salt water and start the tank. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share and ring the bell and see you soon.